Hi, I'm Katrina. Hi, I'm Belinda. Welcome to Crumbs 13. Today we're going to talk about Jacob again, and um, we just did a whole, last week was all about the deception and the lie that Jacob fell into through his mom orchestrating all this to bring about um, the blessing that was spoken on him. Yeah, and it lit a fire under his brother Esau because Esau um, has now declared that he is going to plot revenge over his brother, Jacob, and so his life is at risk, and his mother knows that. Yeah. And so she goes to Isaac and makes a plan to have Jacob go to find a wife um, on her side of the family. So if you have your Bible, you can open it up to um, Genesis 28. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and you can just kind of follow along because this part and now um, Jacob is running. Yeah. Because the the brother wants to kill him, and it's I, isn't that crazy? The brother wants to kill him because first the brother forfeit his birthright for giving right. it up for his tummy. Right. Mm -hmm. And then now the now the deception plays out and Jacob gets this amazing blessing spoken over him. Mm-hmm. And and then from getting that blessing, Esau becomes mad and enraged, as yeah. we said. So I just want to say again, if you didn't listen to last week's video, this could be really confusing for you. So just on the friend. Yes. So just I, we recommend watching that video if you're able to. Yep. So um, now Jacob's on the run yeah. and the night it's the night. The sun is setting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I also it is that um Rebecca has <clears throat> sent him away to where her family is. Right. So he is on the run to where his family is and he is looking for a bride too. Yes, he is. And um, he lands, so he went out, um, he's going towards Haran and he comes upon this place where the sun is setting and he decides this is where he's gonna stop for the night because it's very dangerous to travel. Um, I'm sure he's in the desert and it's very dangerous to travel at night. So he makes a place for himself and it's interesting because he takes a rock, a stone, your scripture might say, and he decides to use this as a pillow. Man, we have the comforts <coughs> of a different idea of pillow. I did, I did think on that, like, huh, a rock for a pillow. Maybe all our neck issues and shoulder issues would be better if we just laid on the ground, slept on the ground, and probably slept kept on a nice rock. arch in their neck. Using <laughs> My a rock. chiropractor would probably say yes. Yes, he would. <laughs> So he, he he takes this rock and he makes a pillow and he lays down and it immediately says he dreamed. Yes. And it's so funny because this morning when we came to meet, the Lord kept telling me, look up that word dreamed. And I, I told Blinda, I go, oh my word. The Hebrew word for that is, um, uh, what did I say? He was restored to health. So he dreamed he was restored to health. So. And I instantly said to you. Yeah. That. Um, surely you are restored to health when you dream and have deep sleep, right? right? Like the REM, mm -hmm. the REM sleep is deep sleep and the father meets you. And if you are one who dreams, like I, my, I'm like, I'm speechless because the father has been so faithful to bring dreams to me. Mm -hmm. Even when I was a little, little girl that I don't remember, I only really remember one from when I was a really little, little girl. And it was actually, now I look back and I totally see it completely different, but they say you don't have the same same dream over and over again. But as a child, I can remember my mom taking me to get checked out because I had the same dream after my dad passed when I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. And I would have the same dream over again, waking up the same way. It was a, it was scary dream. Um, but I look at that dream totally different. But mm -hmm. I, I love the voice of the Lord. And the voice of the Lord hasn't changed. Um, I think the enemy has tried to silence it and quiet it by saying, um, that's strange, that's weird, that's creepy. Mm -hmm. um, but the voice of the Lord hasn't changed. He still wants to meet us in our dreams. He still mm -hmm. is speaking to us audibly. I, I mean, he's still doing all the ways that he's done through Scripture, all the things that he has done been doing he hasn't changed he is the same today he was the same yesterday and he will be the same tomorrow mm -hmm. and every day after and um he wants to talk to you if you are dreaming and and write him down start asking mm -hmm. the father to reveal to you um 
because even like it's time we should do that testimony of your life mm -hmm. yeah your how he met you yeah i know it's amazing it so is time. god meets so back to this yeah so god meets him in this dream and um well, you you said write it down that's exactly what i was hearing the holy spirit say to me write it down because this dream from thousands of years ago is it's written down impacting lives still today mm -hmm. so write it down and in order for it to be impacting lives it was spoken and shared over and over and over again until it got to the place where it was written on a scroll yeah that's a beautiful thought it is because the word of the Truly. testimony and the spoken word of the testimony and the power of sharing what God is doing in you and the power of sharing his truth um, can manifest way beyond you for years after. Yeah, absolutely. So, so let's go into this dream. Yes. The ladder. It happens immediately. It does. It says, and he dreamed and behold, a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it that is one verse so we'll start there in verse 12. so there's a ladder mm -hmm. now when i went to the word ladder i immediately obviously started going into the hebrew letters and it's so interesting because one of the hebrew letters in ladder is actually a staff um wow. which is our shepherd mm -hmm. and also if you look at the numerical value of the hebrew letters lamin is in there and lamin is um it's this fibrous protein that actually provides structural protection to our cells. It's holding our bodies together. And lamin, if you look at it under a microscope, looks like the cross. And so yeah. there's so much in this ladder, which I know we're gonna dig into. I, we both have a lot on this. Well, we'll but yeah, just that, just that word, just that word ladder. Well, I like actually heard chair. someone from a message 10 years ago. I, I was just, um, on my way into work listening and to something and um he talked about how when he was looking up the word ladder and even like um when he was doing a whole word search how it became like i can't remember the right word for it but it was it was like the look of our dna, DNA like a helix yeah like a helix mm -hmm. wow like that's amazing it to me is. like yeah how incredibly cool is that where the father shows him this ladder and and we just talked about our birthright and our inheritance and and how through Jesus Christ he he has created our DNA. Yes. So I'm just so excited about this. Okay, so now he's got this ladder. He sees these angels <laughs> ascending and descending and I love that we talked about angels. I shared on our testimony um a testimony video about how I have encountered um, this similar outlook of an angel in my life mm -hmm. and and how God um, has met me and changed me and comforted me in so many miraculous ways mm -hmm. in revealing this angel but I didn't know so we talked mm -hmm. so I love the fact that the angels are coming down mm -hmm. and they're doing what they've been called to do angels on assignment is a really cool book we've talked about that mm -hmm. and then they go back up for another assignment like I just had this envision that they were coming down and going back up because mm -hmm. they did their assignment and then they went back up mm -hmm. to retrieve a new assignment and then they would come back down yeah and in, in that book heaven awaits the bride oh yes. Um, she actually it, I immediately thought of an open vision that the Lord gave her where she could see this ladder. Oh. And it was connecting yeah. heaven and earth. But earth almost looked like a desert. And gosh, man, can it we all is. relate to that? <laughs> um, so it, it's amazing to think of this ladder that is like a portal um, almost, which it's even cooler as we keep going, but um, it's like it's like our, it's it's our our gate it's mm -hmm. our entrance it's our way into heaven but it's their way into heaven it's their mm -hmm. their way to come down and to be um purposeful in our lives and to bring things back to the father like it's just it's almost magical it is and so then he sees mm -hmm. and this is super cool he says he sees the lord standing above it can i read verse 13 yes i just love reading it okay <laughs> and behold the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. 
the land whereon thou liest. To thee will I give it, and to thy seed. It's really good. It's so good. I know, we love it because this is how he moves in us. This is a spiritual encounter that Jacob is having in his rest. Mm -hmm. So where does the Father say he will meet you? In your rest. Mm -hmm. Like, peace and rest he gives to us. And, and we, because he, he um, battled the grave for us, I mean, we have the Holy Spirit who dwells within us and wants to speak to us and lead us and direct us and say, no, don't go that way. Yeah, yeah. So I love how this letter, um, we, we see it in the Hebrew, we see it in numerical value. Mm -hmm. We literally see this ladder as Christ. Mm -hmm. Like we both saw it, like mm -hmm. the ladder is Christ. And we know it's Christ because Christ says in John 14, I am the way, the, the truth. truth and the life. I'm the way to the Father. I'm the only way to the Father. And so we see this ladder, which immediately we realize represents Christ because the Father is standing at the top. Mm -hmm. It's so rich. rich. Yeah. And then, and then he speaks promise. Yes. Like he pours out the Lord speaks to Jacob in his rest while he sleeps head upon the rock. And you can play like do a symbolic thing with that Old Testament wise, because mm -hmm. we find later that Jesus, our savior is the cornerstone that mm -hmm. was rejected and the rock in which we stand on, the yes. solid ground in which we stand on. Yeah. So his head is upon the rock and the Lord speaks out promise. Now, let's just back up for just a pause one moment. Jacob is on the run from his consequences. Mm -hmm. Jacob is on the run from deceiving his father. Jacob is on the run from taking what wasn't his initially initially but it was given to him by his brother it was and, given to and, him by his brother you can make that battle by his own faith he saw the depth of the promise that he was receiving outside of what was right. in front of him right but i think it's also important to know he was alone completely yes. alone there were no voices there were no distractions but and this is what's so great about the Father is that um, if you're running from him, he's he's gonna catch you. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't run. Don't try. <laughs> he's gonna catch you. He's already caught you. <clears throat> um, and his love for you has paid the price at a level that we can't even begin to understand the depth of that cost. Mm -hmm. And um, so Jacob is on the run, he lays down and the Lord meets him. I am just asking right now, I just feel so compelled to just say, Father, I pray that everyone who hears this, when they rest their head and fall asleep, that you will meet them in, in their dreams in Jesus name. Mm -hmm. So he speaks this promise, what's the promise? Yeah, so in verse 14 he says, and thy seed, shall be as the dust of the earth, which is his promise of fruitfulness um, uh, with children and descendants. And mm -hmm. thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east, and to the north and to the south, and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of earth be blessed. All the families all your of family, earth. Our family. I, I, I just oh. circled that all. all. I was like, all the families of earth. All the families of earth shall be blessed. Yeah. And um, if you remember back in Genesis in the very beginning, he formed man from the dust of the yeah. earth. Yes. And um, I, I love how amazing God is because he told Abraham in a blessing that his descendants would be as many as the stars, right? He and did. The sand. He did. And so now we've got Jacob receiving this amazing blessing. Mm -hmm. and, and the multitudes, and you can't count it. No, and you can't even see the dust of the earth. No, and tr and, and the other part about this is um, the the power in generations. So yes, if you are listening today, you may have somebody in your generational lineup that prayed for you. 
Mm -hmm. um, or you may be that parent or friend that's praying for somebody else. The power in praying for other people, for being obedient, the power in your faith that it has on generations to come, like it is, you can't count it. It's innum innumerable. So, yeah. and, and that is what's spoken here. All I can keep thinking, I have this question running through my head and is that someone's going, but what do I pray? What do I pray over my family? Mm -hmm. Well, what you pray is that the generational sin would be broken off of them in Jesus' name. And then we've talked about how many prayers are in your word. There yeah. are, in Ephesians, you can find the armor of God we've talked about. Yep. In the very beginning, Ephesians 1.17, there is this wonderful prayer about open up the eyes of our understanding. Pray that, put the names of your family in that, that their eyes of spiritual understanding would be open to see his truth, to experience his ladder, uh, to see his angels ascend and descend, to see him standing in glory over us um, and for us is huge. Yeah, and as you're becoming familiar with those promises, it's going to reassure you in your faith and bring you to a greater reliance on Jesus. Because we even see in verse 15, he says, and behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land. For mm -hmm. I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. So God makes a promise here in verse 15 that what he speaks to us in this word, he will not leave us or forsake us. He will keep his promises and he will be with us through it all. And, and so, he's doing that. Oh, he is with every us. Every single day. And Whether we are the blessed generation. I mean, in the midst of hardship, we are the blessed generation that we have him. Yeah. We become his temple. The church age. We are yeah. his traveling temple. Mm -hmm. We have his spirit. If you ask him into your heart and you ask him to manifest his spirit within you and you are born of both um, water and of spirit, we have him. He is with you wherever and he is chasing down. He wants all to receive the blessing. I think many don't receive his blessings because they A, don't acknowledge it, and B, they, they're confused on um, what a blessing is. Yeah. Because a worldly blessing and a godly blessing sometimes can be similar and sometimes can be completely different. Yeah. I love to like Jacob's response when he wakes up. Oh, this is good. He immediately is like, surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not, which mm -hmm. is what you're saying right now. Yeah. We may not know it all the time, but the Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place right now. Yeah. He is here right now. Mm -hmm. um, even when we don't know it, he is there. And it says in 17, and he was afraid mm -hmm. and said how dreadful, which is a word for awesome, is this place. Yeah. This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. He was afraid. That word afraid, I mean, that's reverence. That's mm -hmm. awe. That's, that's the right reverence. Oh. That's the right fear. So good. The fear of the Lord is the right fear. The fear of man, I mean, that's why scripture says, what can man do to you? Yeah, right, right. Because really, who holds death and life? Yeah. The Father. The Father. The Father. So then it can, it continues with the wake up. And mm -hmm. he, he's been so wowed by the encounter of the Lord, by the dream and the vision of the Father, and so blessed that he is just in awe. Like, he is just overwhelmed and that God wants to meet you that way today. Yeah. He is not withholding that sort of presence. He is not withholding that from you. You have to be willing to receive it and see mm -hmm. it as him. And then um, it says that um, Jacob took oil and he poured it over the stone. Yeah. He made and the stone a pillar. A pillar. He consecrated mm -hmm the the stone he brought because it was all such a powerful moment of the holy spirit and the encounter of the father that he completely just consecrated the whole place as holy unto the lord I and love he that. and he he changed the name to, to bethel, bethel which is a word that i'm sure that you've heard which means house of god mm -hmm. for surely this is the house of god yeah and you have been created to be the house of God. Ooh, My earbud just came oh, out. <laughs> Get that back in. 
Yeah, and I, I love that he consecrated the rock um, because we, as we accept the blessing, as we accept the Father, as we stand in his presence, like we are consecrated vessels. And, and the rock was a pillar, which made me think of the word witness for some reason. Like mm -hmm. it's a witness. He left it as a witness to what happened there in Bethel. And we are we are a witness we are a pillar like in what we do and how we live like that is um a witness to god's goodness and his grace and his mercy in our lives we have brought the scripture up a lot but i'm going to say it one more time before we close and that is um revelation 12 11. they overcame him who is the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to their death they didn't love their life more than christ yeah and and um oh, so that, key right now that is so key and the testimony of father is the witness of him within you and so he wants um to shout a good witness through you yes he does so um we just want to encourage you again open up your word read the story um it's short it's so sweet it's so good and um and let him meet you yes let yes. him meet you in the dream. Start yeah. writing them. Start asking him. Mm -hmm. He wants to meet you because he says in the last days. Yeah, he will be pouring out his spirit. And he will pour it out. We will all be dreaming. Yeah, so. visions and dreams will become abundant <clears throat> in the last days. Don't discount it. No. Don't pass it off. And if, with that, we can't wait to meet you at his table. Yeah, God bless you. <laughs>